Hi, so I've been asked to do a video on the peripheral pulses. Um, and we're going to take a script-wise approach as we've always done. And so I think the script for this one is, think of it head to toe. So let's mention the pulses. So in the head and neck, the very first pulse is the superficial temporal, or what you hear people call the temporal pulse. It's actually a branch of the external carotid artery, isn't it? Which is one of the terminal branches of the common carotid artery. Uh, and then you have the facial artery as well, which is this way, the temporal goes that way. So around the temporal region. Then after that, you think of the carotid artery here, which is in the neck, somewhere there. So the, the surface anatomy I would show. So think of the, the trachea and the stenocleidomastoid because it is within the carotid sheet. Now with that said, the upper limb, you have the subclavian artery. Remember the... Sorry, I have to show this on myself. Remember the clavicle? So the subclavian artery is just behind the clavicle. We're going to show the surface anatomy. Then the axillary as well. You have that, the axillary artery. And then you have the brachial artery. Yeah? Which is somewhere wrong that way. And then eventually you... It moves on to form the, you have the radial and the ulnar arteries. Now, with that done, in the abdomen, you have the aorta, the abdominal aorta. Now, after that, you have the femoral pulse, right and left. And then you have the popliteal mm -hmm. on the knee. And then you have the posterior tibial and dorsalis pedis. Good. So with that established, let's go into the how to examine the pulses. Now, generally, when you examine pulse, you want to check rhythm, rate, volume, you know, thickness of the the um, vessel wall, and things like that. Now let's start. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to locate the triggers. And usually you should feel, if you go anteriorly like that, you should feel the superficial temporal pulse. I can actually feel mine. Now, generally, when you're feeling for pulses, you should feel on both sides to check that they are equal. Now, the facial pulse is you try and come to the lower, towards the, the end edge of the mandible posteriorly and you can feel it here good now what's left is the carotid pulse now the, the, the principle of palpating the carotid pulse is because it's the main supply to the head uh, sorry to the brain you wouldn't palpate both at the same time and you wouldn't palpate too strongly. So you don't uh, uh, cause the patient to go into fainting because of lack of blood supply to the brain. So you do one side first. So you look for the stenocleidomastoid and then the trachea. So the carotid sheet is somewhere here. So if you palpate just in between there, good. And you do... Good, I could feel on the same. Oftentimes, uh, there's preference to use it as the pulse point during trauma. With that done, not commonly palpated is the subclavian. So you look for the clavicle and you go around the junction of, with the humerus. And if you palpate here, you may be able to, in a thin person, yeah, you may be able to palpate the subclavian. Now, if you put your hand within the axilla and do that, you should be able to palpate good. And on this side, good. Axillary pulse. Then oftentimes on the medial end, you should be able to palpate 
the brachial pulse that way that's one option you come you know here or you can come here in the cubital fossa and palpate and feel for the brachial pulse because um yes so the brachial artery is there you can feel for the brachial pulse once you've done that what's left in the upper limb is the radius and ulna so you take three fingers like that and you go to the radial end you know you can one of the tricks i teach is come here run your hand that way fingers that way and feel here good you can now try and feel the ulna which is not easy to feel on the contralateral side so let me just show you that so uh so the all so the, this is the radial and then the ulna would be that way so you feel for the ulna good so that feels for the ulna pulse now after this, you feel for the midline pulses. So you ask the patient to lie down. You go, you locate the umbilicus, and you go just above it. And uh, oftentimes you do this on one side, and then you press, and then you try and feel for. Oftentimes in slim patients, you should be able to feel the, the abdominal aorta. And in aneurysm, of course, the difference there, there will be difference what you palpate. Once you've done that, you want to quickly assess the femoral pulse. And the first thing, what you want to do is you want to locate, remember in my video on hernias, you want to locate the pupic symphysis, and you want to locate the anterior superior iliac spine, the equidistance in between. Once you go just one to two cm below that, the inguinal ligament at that point, you should feel the femoral pulse there. That's the surface anatomy of the femoral pulse, and therefore you palpate like that both ways. Now, after that, you want to do this, which is probably most difficult. You want to relax the knee, and then you want to press in. Remember that the artery, the popliteal artery, is the deepest structure. Therefore, you press in to feel the popliteal pulse. Once you felt that, there are only two pulses left. Sorry, you need to see my feet. But the first one is the posterior tibia. So you look for the medial malleoli and go just one cm behind it. And then there you have the popliteal artery. So once you've done that, you want to do this next. You want to look for the dosalis pedis. So you want to look for the extensor halysis. So probably a trick to do is you come here and then it's just lateral there. That's the dosalis pedis. Should get, feel it here. Okay, so the dosalis pedis is just lateral, the extensor halysis. So this forms the all the pulses. I hope you find this video helpful. So let's do a quick recap. All right, so quick recap is in the head and neck, you have the superficial temporal as well as the facial artery pulse. Then you have the carotid, which you shouldn't compress at the same time. And you have the subclavian, and then you have the axillary, and then you have the brachial, and then you have the radial and ulna, and then you have the abdominal aorta, and then you have the femoral, and then popliteal, then posterior tibial, and dosalis pedis. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this video useful. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.